It will forever leave an image in your mind of a little biddle with a peaked cap glued onto its shiny, earless head, unable to see the sun, and thus meandering pointlessly with their dung balls. Well, this reviewer is referring to the award-winning dance of the dung beetles, their role in our changing world, which tells the story of the mind-boggling, but at least to the public, little-known dung beetle. It is authored by School of Animal, Plant and Environmental Science at the University of the Witwatersrand, Professor Marcus Byrne, and uh, literature specialist Helen Lynn. Entomologist Professor Byrne joins us now via Skype to tell us more. Professor, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Morning, Simpi Wayne. Thanks for the invitation. It is very rare that we talk about, um, you know, this this dung beetle. And uh, do you want to give us a, a brief synopsis of what Dance of the Dung Beetle is all about and what really inspired the book? Yeah, thanks. You're right. Um, who cares about small insects? But I think South Africans actually are very good in um, their understanding and care about wildlife. So we actually had a good audience to start with um, speaking to South Africans about dung beetles because we're all pretty much aware of them. Um, but in terms of the book, it's really a history of science. And so what we've done is we've started with the Egyptians and who, to some degree, we think worshipped dung beetles. And we've carried the story right through from 3,000 years ago to the present day, a lot of it taking place in Africa, in the north, in the south. And really, human, humans' um, search for knowledge carried by a little insect. Uh, it's sort of a history for, of science. Now, take us through the kind of research uh, that went into putting this book together and uh, what is it really about the dung beetle that made you stop and pay attention? Um, the research was actually, at one end of it, it was fairly easy because it's the research I do myself. So um, a lot of modern research actually takes place in South Africa with dung beetles. Um, we're looking at their orientation behavior. Like you said, you, you talked about the story with the beetle wearing a hat. And the reason it was wearing a hat is we were stopping it looking at the sky. And then we could see um, whether it could orientate or not. So that bit was actually fairly easy. It was the other end of the story that was much harder because it was digging out um, the the story of the dung beetle in ancient Egypt. And most people are aware that the scarab is part of the Egyptian mythology, but really trying to find out exactly what they thought about it and, and why they revered it was actually quite difficult because they were really clever people. And there's no way that we would just accept that they thought the dung beetle was a god because it moved the sun across the sky. You know, these are people that knew that the earth was round. They knew the circumference of the earth. They were very, very clever scientists. And that bit of the story was quite difficult to delve into. But um, largely it was fun because my co-author, Helen Lund, is one of these people who just burrows into information and will follow a story wherever it goes. And uh, in the end, it was good fun doing the whole story. And this book, Professor, makes mention of the Beatles' role uh, in our changing world. Just how deeply interconnected are humans to dung beetles and how important are they for our survival? You know, everybody beats their own drum. You say, well, the area I work in is the most important. But um, at the moment, we are facing massive challenges as humanity because we are changing the planet so much around us. Uh, and so rapidly that we don't actually know what sort of effect we're having on that planet. And even if you, you just look at the insects, in the last few years, there's been a massive decline in insects across the world. So we think our insect populations are collapsing, you know, 70% less insects, 40% um, less species in some areas. And these are the little animals that run the world. They're at the bottom of the food chain. They're the ones that they are the ultimate recyclers. They are returning nutrients back into the soil that we can then grow plants out of it. And dung beetles are a massive part of that. There's 6,000 species worldwide. 
2,000 species in Africa, 800 species in South Africa. And they literally turn the soil. You know, they, they aerate the soil. They allow water to penetrate the soil. They return nutrients into the soil. And we know nothing about them. We know a lot of things about elephants and rhinos, but we don't know enough about the insects that share our planet. And they're the ones at the bottom of the, the food chain that are supporting the rest of it. So obviously I would punt my group but I do think there's a very good argument to say that we need to know more about insects, and particularly dung beetles. Mm, mm. And uh, having no know, knowing more about uh, insects, I mean, I've been reading up a bit about uh, the dung beetle, and I understand that it, it has a brain the size of a grain of rice, and yet it shows a tremendous amount of intelligence when it comes to rolling its food source, that is, animal excrement, home. How is that? Yeah, well, great. I think that's, a, you see, you've picked up on the other side of the story now. So I'm talking about the bottom end. And at the top end, as humans, we can learn from them again, because, as you say, they are superb orientators and navigators. And they've got tiny brains. Now, how on earth does an animal with very little brain do something which I myself can't do? I've got a, an appalling sense of direction. Um, and what we've found is, is that they use the celestial cues in the sky. They use um, the sun, they use the moon, the stars, depending on when they're active, to orientate themselves. So they've got a compass in this tiny brain that works on very few neurons, very little energy, and can guide this animal back and forth across the planet to find its way around. Now, on the one hand, that's just interesting as a biologist. But on the other hand, if you're building robots or autonomous machines that need to find their way around the planet, then you can copy basically the neural circuitry of that beetle and build a better robot. So, you know, these animals are useful to us at both ends of the scale. Bottom end, our ecosystems and providing food and at the top end to help us design you know, Professor, we don't have much time, unfortunately, but then thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. And uh, it's so heartwarming, Professor, that a whole professor would pay so much attention and uh, speak so passionately about a little insert. And as we say, it should be accorded godlike status. Thanks, uh, thanks again for your time, Professor Byrne. Thank you. Well, that was School of Animal, Plant and Environmental Science at the University of the Witwatersrand and entomologist Professor Marcus Byrne speaking to us about his award-winning book Dance of the Dung Beetles, Their Role in Our Changing World. He co-authored the book with literature specialist Helen Lern and we understand that scientists from Sweden, Australia, Germany and South Africa converge every year and this is where and how the whole issue of the dung beetle affair came about.